Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be an Enzo discussion, E-N-S-O, uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation. And it's basically today we're just going to be talking about what um, the latest updates are in terms of the Enzo and the recent evolution, current status and predictions. Basically, you can see this was updated the 16th of September. Today's the 18th as of recording this video. So there is, uh, you know, this is very recent, especially since they only update this once a month. Before we uh, get into this video, consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video, uh, and it <clears throat> really helps this channel grow a lot, and uh, it really means to me, you know, shows me that you like these type of videos, and if you know, it really, um, it really uh, helps out a lot, so consider doing so, also consider leaving a nice comment, read all the comments, may not answer them, but I read them, and then uh, consider liking it you know once you decide to uh, whether you like the video or not so thank you the outline <laughs> you can see we'll be going through many things right now the summary though enzo or enso neutral conditions are present and uh basically uh <clears throat> it's a 75 percent chance to continue through spring 2020 you could see uh, they incre they dr drastically increase the chances for a neutral so what I previously thought about, you know, maybe them kind of diminishing, well, they actually, <clears throat> they actually think that, uh, the, you know, that, that an Enzo neutral will continue almost very likely at this point through spring 2020, um, at least through the fall and winter. And through spring 60%, which 60% was earlier given through a fall, and now it's through spring. So definitely has gone up. If we look at the latest weekly SST sea surface temperature departures, uh, all the regions have been going negative other than the Nino uh, 4. And that is the one that is furthest out. And that's what's keeping this from really, you know, going further into a La Nina. Um, the Nino 3.4 has been cooling off. Nino uh, 3 has been chilling off and Nino 1 plus 2 also has been on the cooler side so uh, it's been definitely towards you know towards a, a neutral leaned towards a La Nina but that doesn't really matter a neutral is a neutral and as long as it's between that negative 0 0.5 and a positive 0 0.5 <laughs> it's considered a neutral and now we have all of these uh, slides and I recommend going for you uh, Anyone watching go uh, just type an Enzo outlook and it's a PowerPoint presentation There's so much information. I won't be going over this thing uh, Many of these slides because there's just so many and I want to keep this video relatively short and concise But you can see <laughs> global sea surface temperatures during the last four weeks uh, <clears throat> they have been uh, again on the cooler side across the uh, across the, the you know the the Enzo region and very warm across the Gulf of Alaska, which also will impact this winter greatly. There's another slide. Here's another slide. I won't necessarily be going over thermal uh, thermocline slope index. Uh, very important, but I won't be going over that currently because due to again the length of this video would be exaggerated. And I just want to go through the, you know, the most important parts and basically what people seem to want. So this is, um, I wanted to show you that, um, this characteristics, because many people, you know, may still question what a El Nino technically is and what a La Nina theoretically is. So, <clears throat> a La Nina, uh, is uh, characterized when uh, they by negative O and I less than or equal to 0 0.5 so that O and I is a period of three months so at least five consecutive overlapping three month seasons and uh, they need to be at least negative 0 0.5 and that's considered a La Nina and that's what a La Nina is and for the El Nino same exact thing just positive 0 0.5 and again that is in uh, this region of uh, of the ocean, this Enzo right here, the, the El Nino Southern Oscillation region off the coast of Peru and Ecuador off of South America. So let's go through this. I want to, uh, you can see the O and I values. Uh, yet again, these are historical. We were in El Nino, now we're more in a neutral. And these are the historical El Nino and La Nina episodes. <clears throat> you can see last year we were in a neutral up until September. But then uh, we got into El Nino across October, November, December. And the, and the winter was a weak El Nino. 
um, and the El Nino was thought to be more impactful, uh, thought to bring warm conditions for the east and the north, but you know, it did quite the opposite. We got quite a chilly winter, frigid winter across the north, the northern plains, the northeast, uh, same, it just maybe a little bit less snow across the coastal areas. Um, it was a weird winter last year. It's either if you, you know, you got a really cold, chilly winter or you had barely any winter at all. <clears throat> but if you look at the Enzo, I also want to point out that now we're back in a neutral. Look at this. Uh, this is as of July. We were in a neutral and again, August it was a neutral and September is a neutral. So we're just going to continue seeing this, uh, you know, going through. And this has been probably, this is probably, you see how it's 0 0.3. That was probably negative 0 0.3, but again, it's not that negative, uh, below that negative 0 0.5 category <clears throat> in order to be a La Nina or El Nino on the flip side. And this is basically, you can see uh, the updated uh, probability, you can see 85% chance for it to continue through September, <clears throat> 70 through October, uh, 65 uh, through November, uh, maybe like 58, 59 through December, January, similar. February around uh, 55 and they basically are pretty confident that the neutral will be the biggest one uh, the, You can see the biggest bar the Alina was actually surprisingly up there <clears throat> um, Well not surprisingly the models have been uh, trending or showing an El Nino more than previously shown But still that hasn't changed as you could see at the top. <laughs> sorry about that at the top the summary was um Basically showing that the uh, neutral con uh, conditions, the probabilities have gone up. <clears throat> so uh, if you know if if something doesn't go right with the Enzo neutral, and uh, we will be looking at a different Enzo by the end of the year, uh, or by the end of the winter, it'll most likely be an El Nino rather than a La Nino. Um, so that is that the Pacific Nino 3.4 model outlook and you can see that the models again That's the El Nino classification. There's quite a bit that are above it uh, these models and in terms of the La Nino there's only one and uh, This is actually the old yeah, this is actually the old updated 19th of August, but I'm still showing you this because uh, th They haven't changed this yet but here's the newer one. You can see that that's the 0 0.5 classification. That's the uh, La Nina. A couple are showing La Nina quite a bit. Like, I would say, I don't know how much that is. I would say, like, 10 are showing the the El Nino. And then probably the majority, like, 50 are showing the neutral. So that's why the statistical average or the forecast ensemble mean in that dashed line is showing a, a neutral, a, you know, the basically going down uh, towards a flat out zero so that's as neutral as it gets <clears throat> and then we got you know keep seeing uh, many things uh, basically showing the atmospheric anomalies over the North Pacific and this basically shows us again <clears throat> the the, uh, the heights and how this has been impacting uh, at different uh, levels of the atmosphere how this has been uh, you know happening with the neutral in place but uh, I also want to show you this U.S. temperature and precipitation departures during the last 30 days. You could see uh, it's been above average for the north, kind of below average for the south and the east. <clears throat> so it's almost like if, again, that the, the, pre the heavier precip or weather conditions is kind of where, uh, I guess, the storms have been tracking and they will, they will, where they will continue tracking. Here are the temperatures, departures. End of date, uh, September 14th, you can see it was cooler, but now this has rather flipped. It's kind of going to be warmer towards the north. And this is uh, the September through November seasonal outlook. Again, look, they have 100% warm for the U.S. That's obviously not going to happen, but, uh, you know, that's that's what they think is going to happen. But they're going to update this once. Um, you know, see, this was made 15th of August once the actual it come probably now since this was updated 15th. They were to update it now. It would be a different story but um again so a very interesting situation i mean we could be looking at a very cold chilly winter neutral could be showing us some the neutral enzo could be showing us uh, very chilly conditions very cold weather across the country we we'll just have to wait and see um if you were to type in uh the enzo neutral winter years uh you know or not winter neutral 
Enzo neutral winter. If you were to look at that neutral pattern, we get a basic outline of what the uh, winters would look like, and you could see chillier across the north, wet and warmer across the south. But again, uh, that wet and warmer across the south uh, could, you know, be necessary and key to producing snow in the south and the northeast. Sometimes this cold overlaps with that wet and warm. And that produces snow, as you can see actually some are showing the long-term anomalies of uh, November through January. I think this that says it's kind of blurry. It shows uh, chillier than what the, this has been, what this shows. Uh, so we'll have to see about how this winter plays out. And again, not all neutrals are the same, but uh, very, you know, very, I think it will be similar to this um, in terms of the cold air. Maybe a little bit wet and warmer across the south. This was actually a winter forecast for 2016, 2017, which is obviously different, but has a good representation of the cold. So we'll have to see what happens. Again, this is a educated guess, but I just wanted to give you an update on Enzo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.